So, true to Atlanta. The Atlanta Hawks are probably one of the more interesting young teams to watch in the NBA. Um, this past season, they led the league in the fastest pace played. Um, that is a testament to how good Lloyd Pierce is as a head coach. And, you know, he's really got these young guys running. I mean, granted, they even played better when all of their key pieces got back. John Collins, um, Torian Prince finally started getting healthier. Um, Kevin Herter returned. Um, it, it's just a lot of good things to like about this Hawks team right now. Of course, you have Trey Young, who made a late surge after the All Star break and started averaging 24 and 9. I mean, the guy can flat out hoop. That's insane. Um, and then, of course, they had a, their first round middle pick, of course, as Kevin Herter, the 6 7 shooting guard out of the University of Maryland. Um, his mode is kind of like Clay Thompson is. Not saying that he's as good as Clay Thompson or he's ever going to be that good, but he has the potential to be right there with him um, as far as the tools and the athleticism and as far as his shooting capabilities. Um, the form is exactly like Clay, which is kind of crazy. Um, of course, then you have Trey Young, who's the mimicking Steph Curry. I mean, he's doing a damn good job at it, of course, but. I mean, I could see this offense going to the next level next year, of course, with John Collins being not your traditional power forward or center where he can stretch the floor and he's kind of getting put back dunks all over the place. Um, so the question with this team right now is, who do they go into this draft drafted? Because this process for them is almost over. They just need to go in and get the right pieces to finish this thing off and develop. Um you could argue they need a 3 and D guy, a small forward to fill that spot because, of course, you have Torian Prince, but let's be honest, Prince is probably not the best answer for them as a small forward. I don't really like Prince as a starting small forward for the Hawks. I don't. I think he's good enough to be like a solid sixth man or something like that, but if we're talking like starting, um, so I guess the thing I can break down with Atlanta first is they potentially have two top lottery picks in this draft um they will get the dallas pick if it falls outside of the top five that came from them trading luca and trey young in this previous draft i think that what may happen is i can see the pick for dallas falling at like number seven or eight and their pick probably falling like number six or something like that of that nature um what i would do is first I would prioritize going to get maybe, I don't know, a 3 and D guy. Um, guys to look at like that are like DeAndre Hunter out of Virginia, Cam Reddish out of Duke, um, or you can go for some instant offense and Jared Cobra maybe. Um, I mean, it depends on what they want to do. The thing with it is it's going to depend on what the Hawks really want to focus on. I mean, of course, if you select DeAndre Hunter out of Virginia, he's going to bring you instant defense. And let's be real, these guys are in need of all the defense they can get. Um, on top of that, you have Cam Reddish, who is kind of not your 3 and D wing. He is a wing, of course, but it just doesn't offer really the defense part just yet i think he has all the tools and skills in the world to become a great defender um but it's just the fact about it is how much work if he is he going to put up for it um i think if the hawks want to go and get somebody who's going to be a glue guy who fits the um offense very well who doesn't really need to take as many shots but focus keenly on defense i think the other hunters their guy um, if they want an extra scoring punch or something like that of that nature where, yeah, you have Trey Young getting enough shots and John Collins, but if you need that third option, that guy that can really go off, I would go Cam Reddish. I think he's a very interesting choice when it comes to selecting him and putting him next to Trey Young for him to stretch out the floor and be able to make a secondary ball handler that can make plays and put the ball in the deck and create his own shot. Um, I don't think that Duke Cam Reddish really got a chance to see what we don't. I don't think we really got a chance to see what he was really capable of. Um, I think he was very overshadowed by R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson being the number one and two option. You know, that kind of was one of those instances where it sounded like a great idea to go to Duke with three guys until you actually did it. And it was like, oh, man, this kind of sucks. But, I mean, yeah, you could go with the, it's the offense and kind of register. Now, 
granted, you do have Jared Culver as well. I haven't watched that much Jared Culver film, honestly. I won't even lie to you. Uh, but from what I've seen of the guy, he can get to his spots very easily, from what I've been told as well. Um, I kind of like him. He's very linky, lanky and long. I mean... For me, when I watched him, he kind of reminded me of a more athletic Jimmy Butler that can get to his spots easily. But, I mean, hey, that's a lofty comparison for a guy coming out of Texas Tech at sophomore season that we've pretty much never even heard of. But, no, I mean, then with that Dallas pick, I mean, you could argue it well. Not even argue. You don't even have to argue, actually. Um, they, they definitely need a center. They definitely need to get somebody in the, the paint to clog that up. Um... The interesting thing about this pick is with the Dallas pick, I would go get Bo Bo. Of course, if you don't know who that is, he played for Oregon. He only played nine games due to injuries. But in that time frame, he averaged 21.9 points per game, um, Fifty shot 54% from the field, 52% from the three-point line. And on top of that, he had a monstrous game where he was just launching threes. Um, He can go off the drill, but he knows how to pump fake. He's kind of like a more mobile and B type of guy where this guy's got some moves, but he really thinks he's a guard out here. Like, he, he really does move like that. I mean, that's kind of scary when you put him in that offense, so of course, with Trey Young and John Collins and Kevin Herter, but also if you go get somebody like Cam Reddish, I mean, yeah, you kind of have to wait to see how the defense and how this development catches up to all these guys, and I mean, there is a lot of guys that need shots, but you know, hey, you could swing for the fences and be like, well, I have one of the most lethal young starting five groups out here, and you know, any one of these guys can get an easy bucket or somebody will just go off all of a sudden. You know, that could launch them into the postseason quicker than rather than later than what they thought. But, I mean, hey, I mean, I could see next year Trey Young, if he was doing this as far as, like, going off like this every at the end of the All-Star break, I can only imagine where he'll come back averaging, like, next season and the growth that he's been learned that he'll put on the court. You know, the sky's the limit for this kid. Um, of course, Kevin Herter, I mean, he's only going to improve. I, I can see him improving very much. I would say Kevin Herter probably averaged at least 14 to 15 points a game this season, just maybe. Um, he averaged 10 this season because I just think that since they know he's a great shooter and I think – Lloyd Pierce knows how to use him more now. I think that he'll build on that success and just keep on improving. I think the Atlanta development staff is very well taught. Um, They can really get things done. Um, As far as John Collins, the guy jumped from 10 points a game to 19 points per game in his rookie to sophomore season. And he missed the first 20 games. So that alone tells you how far of a jump this man can make. Um, He's kind of the mobile power forward, but I like John Collins. He brings energy to the team. He can run. He can jump out the gym, catch lobs, um, put back dunks. He's a tenacious rebounder at times. Um, I really like him next to, like, Bo Bo. If you were to assert Bo Bo in there, he can help him on defense. John Collins is not really known for your, like, defensive presence, so it's like Bo Bo can stretch out, help him on the block and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, it's very it's very warrior-esque if I could say for this lineup and this offense. Um, of course, if you get Bowl Bowl and Cam Reddish, of course, those guys space the floor as well, so you can play them five out, and you can let Trey Young pretty much do his thing, and he's got options to kick it out to somebody. Um, and, of course, if you got Cam Reddish and Kevin Herter there, he can go off the drill. But I think DeAndre Hunter would be capable of going off the drill, but I think he's more of your typical spot-up 3D guy where he could just pretty much spot up both threes. Um, I don't think he's quite got it yet to where the point where he can make all his – he can create his own shot. But, granted, you would hope he would get to that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think they get rid of, like, maybe Deadman's contract. I mean, he's got a hefty one right now. Um, I think you hold on to Alex Lynn. He showed enough promise to where I think I can do something with him and still help him, and he can still help us some way. Um you know, of course, get rid of Cam Bays more. The guy's old as hell now. Um, maybe you would move on from, like, Vince Carter, maybe. Um, maybe though Vince only on a one-year deal, but he does want to come back for another NBA season. So, I mean, there you have it for that one. Um, whether he goes to Atlanta or goes back to Toronto, who knows. Um, 
I think it's a very interesting case with these Hawks, though. They are one of the best up-and-coming teams right there with the Sacramento Kings. So, hey, true 